Yeah, um, yeah, uh, we are going live in uh, Facebook, my okay. Facebook. Your Facebook, uh, so I yeah, go. Yeah, uh, live right now, but it uh, seems that the static, oh no, it's a delay, uh, but it's live in my yeah, Facebook. Yeah, delay. Yeah. Jadi harus di, ini, harus di mute aja, Pak, jadi supaya enggak suaranya double. Enggak, so, sudah tak mute, tak mati ini yang uh -huh. ini. Ya, Let pasang uh, watch party ya. Aku bisa pasang watch party. Watch party, oh. what's that? Uh, jadi aku juga aku juga live di Facebookku, teman-temanku akan tahu juga gitu. Oke. Oke. Oh, okay. okay. um. Bu Ina atau Bu Inda juga bisa pasang watch party di Facebooknya. Jadi teman-teman yang di Facebooknya yang nggak daftar bisa nonton dari Facebook. Oh iya, yeah. oke. Okay. Dari eh double ya ada nih ya ini belum belum dibuka tapi pack anu eh, belum dibuka tapi sudah pada bisa nonton yang di Facebook <laughs> ya nggak apa-apa Pre -pre preparasinya lama ya 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 biarlah Ini teman-teman. Eh, Ini teman -teman. Uh, gak ada yang salah kan? <laughs> uh, Neni set oke, okay. uh, Daniel set oke, okay. Celia siap. Um, should we invite them to get in or? Oh, no lah. Oh, no lah. Uh, Sudah pada bisa kan? Ya, yeah. morning Bu Neni. Wait, wait, mana Ibu Neni? Sudah tidur apa belum? <laughs> belum, belum. Tidur. Eh itu, <laughs> terus pakai ID Jati itu kenapa salah? <laughs> kenapa namanya Jati? <laughs> ya itu aku ID tel. Gak ada suaranya masih mute Kakak Neni. Oh, kakak ya. Neni masih mute. On uh, the email that Pak Jati sent, so I don't know. It's like hi Jati, yeah, hello. <laughs> uh, oh. uh, was it the email from Pak Jati? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This, this email from, from Itel. Itel. Okay. Yeah, it's email from Itel. So um, yeah, sa oh, salah. Means... Ada satu yang salah. Emailnya yeah. Neni, tapi namanya namaku. Gitu, yes, aku oh, suka well. kopas 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 cepet gitu, nggak apa apa lah ya. Yeah, okay. So yeah, well. Excuse By my the way, face. we are uh, broadcasting on we? Facebook too, Mbak Nen. So you can uh, okay. uh, it's watch already party. broadcast. broadcast. All right, so I need to, I need, I need one sec. I need, I definitely need one sec. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Ini eh, teman-teman kita ada di. Fish. Let's just open the room, Mbak. Huh? Open the Fish. room with push. Oke, okay, aku buka ya. Ya. Broadcast ya. Broadcast aja lah. Fish. So that we uh, participants will get in. Should we mute yeah. or um, nyantai saja? Gak apa-apa sih nyantai aja. Recordednya nanti lah ya. Uh -uh. Thank you. 
Selamat pagi, good morning teman-teman yes. semua. Selamat datang. Good morning. Yeah. Morning Pak Yusua. Ya, yeah, morning Celia. Oh, still connecting. Morning. Morning, suara kok kedengeran nggak ya? Ya, yes, terdengar oh, kedengeran. Morning. Morning Grace. Good morning everyone. Morning. Good morning. Ya, aku podcast di Facebookku ya. This is already live on Facebook. Ya, yeah. bisa hold watch party juga. Bentar, aku harus ambil sesuatu. Mute dulu. Morning. Morning Pak Agus. Good morning Pak Jati. Good yeah. morning teman-teman. Aku sudah mulai live ini live di Facebook tapi. Oke. Okay. Nyo- lagi nyoba yang sangat informal biarlah enggak apa-apa. Siap. Yeah. Wah ada Bu Felicia. Selamat datang Bu Felicia. Morning. Ya, good morning Bu Felicia. Ada Bu Felicia juga. Uh, Prof Anil from India. Welcome. We might use mixture of bahasa Indonesia and English Prof Anil. So, be prepared. Oh, Oke. Okay. Oh, okay. Pak Agus, there, be, there is a, a participant from India. Yeah. And we still have about 10 minutes to go, right? Yeah, about yeah, 10 yeah, minutes to go. Have... We're still waiting for um, Daniel. How are you here? Selamat pagi. Yeah, morning. Morning. Glowing and sparkling. terlalu bikin sakit mata. We now have seventy seven attendees. Oh, 
Oh yeah, 77 attendees. 88, 89. 88 including us. Oh yeah. Good morning, Madura. Ibu Lasmi. Good morning, Pak Ray, Kalimantan. Palembang, Lampung, East Java, Madura. Ini mohon maaf ya kalau lagi nyebut-nyebut terus nggak kesebut gitu, jangan sakit hati. <laughs> yeah, Makassar also. Adi Buana, hello, Surabaya. Ini kayaknya dari Sulawesi akan banyak uh, fansnya Bu Ina nih. Ya, kayaknya. <laughs> Sepertinya. Amin. Morning Kakak Lutfi. Morning Pak. Ya, bagaimana giginya? <laughs> Sakit gigi kemarin. <laughs> Morning Pak Eri. Morning Pak Jati. Ya. Morning halo you. semua. Ya. Morning Pak Eri. Morning semua. Oh, oh ND. Halo tambah, maaf lahir batin. We are from Indi, Fabe Wanggai. Good morning, from NTT. Yeah, good morning from Riau. Sini, dulu sini. Wah, ini koncone Mas Daniel ini. From from Parang Tritis. Parang Tritis. <laughs> Parang tritis ramai nggak yang liburan selama corona? <laughs> Kayaknya orang Jogja selalu-selalu aja nih. <laughs> Banjar Masin. Yes, we've got someone also from Philippines. Joshua. Oh ya, yeah. we we got one from India. Oh. One from India, one oh. from Philippines. Yeah. Yogyakarta hadiningrat. Wow, Maratua Island, Brau. Brau, Kalimantan Timur. Ada sinyal ya di Brau. Pak Jati, can you turn my video on? Uh, uh, no. No. Um, you you should do it on your own, Pak Nen. Um, I cannot. You oh, wait, cannot. wait. wait. Because wait, wait. it said that you cannot start your video because the host is. Uh, I turn I turn it off. Oh, Are you trying me. to sabotage me? <laughs> yeah. I have not a feeling me. that I have a nasty feeling that you try to sabotage me. <laughs> it's a fact. <laughs> it's a fact that you uh, yeah. toward me. Thank you very much, Mita. But no, you look uh, more appropriate on cam. <laughs> oh. Let Compared to a few minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, now I'm kind of like appropriate. Now you have touch up yourself. <laughs> no, I don't actually. The cigarette did this. Oh, okay. <laughs> no wonder. It works well. Yeah. Siggy works well on me. I don't know and about the others. but Coffee. Oh, I got my coffee and I got my chocolate. So yeah, got my coffee, got my chocolate. I'm all right. Uh, throw, throw away the chocolate. From my face. Uh, here you go. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not looking at it. <laughs> really? Yeah. No, no, no. My British friends actually disagree with you, Toar, because they're always complaining about my American accent, which is like totally crap, but hey. Okay. Selamat Hari Kesaktian Pancasila. No, it's not kesaktian. It's kelahiran right now, right? This is hari kelahiran Pancasila. Yeah, not the kesaktian. And I did join the ceremony this morning, Pak Jati. Oh, good, 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 good. Such a, such a civil servant. <laughs> such a dedicated civil servant, Pak Agus. Yeah, that's, that's a good way. <laughs> I didn't join any ceremony. 
Yeah, Fajar Rudin is here. Uh, okay, Go morning, ahead. Mas Fajar. We're going to start in three minutes. Okay, two minutes. My video is okay, right? Perfect. Uh, my voice, is it clear enough? If you get closer to your microphone, probably can be clearer. Uh, how about now? Okay, but not that clear, I think. Maybe I will talk a bit loud later. So you can use uh, like a headset or because I think is he's, he's using a headset. Oh, really? Yes, I'm he, using a headset, using... but it has no microphone. I'm using. I'm ah, still using see? the phone microphone. Oh, okay. Ah, all right. Agus, ready? All right. Two more minutes. Yeah, we, we still have two more minutes. Oh, by my time, it's 9.59. <laughs> A little bit of touch up of makeup, probably, for Agus. Who do wonders? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, why it's so cold here. I need to put on my jackets perhaps. How's you the weather know. there everywhere? I have either, but this is this is almost summer, so we decided to turn it off to save the bill. All right. <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> well, yeah, it's bloody expensive, so. <sighs> oh gosh. How's the weather out there in Indonesia? It's a shiny morning here in Salatiga. It's bright, shiny morning in Bali. Yeah, in Bandung too. Oh, it's, then, bright. it's bright also then, here in Solo. But then the problem is when it is sunny ah. here, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's warm. Of course, <laughs> it's, it's, sunny, it's still cold. It's warm, it's still cold. <laughs> so that's kind of like, geez. But today is uh, bright as your face, Nanny. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, come on. Oh my you don't gosh. have to say that, Pagus. <laughs> We're live on Facebook, by the way. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's um, 10 o'clock. Should we start then? Yes. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the ITAL. And today, this is the start of season number two and then uh, because last month we had a season number one exactly. and then today we will have a uh, like a question and answer sessions especially with those uh, who has presented who have presented in the previous sessions and to let you know uh, here with us are all the ital presenters of season number one and also we have three guest stars uh, and then uh, three guest stars and then we will have them uh, have a talk with them in the second, uh, what is it, second session after this. And then, oh yeah, I need to probably uh, let you know that we will break these sessions for three what is it? Three section. Section one will be a discussion of the some questions that present or that participants have submitted, and then all the presenters will be very happy to what is it? To answer some of the questions. Uh, that will last for about thirty minutes, and then the next section, another 
30 minutes, we will invite uh, the special sessions for the special three guest stars. And then finally, we will have a live question and uh, answer sessions. Currently, we have 174 and it's counting participants. And we will, uh, we are expecting more than 500 probably th this morning. Okay, so before we move on, I need to introduce myself probably. I am Agus and currently I am based in Universitas Sebelas Maret Solo. And then we will start from Pak Jati. Pak Jati, please raise your hands. Uh, Pak Jati, the, he is the president of the ITAL. And then uh, we will have uh, the secretary general of the ITAL, Kakak Toar. Kakak Toar, yes, Kakak Toar. And then we have uh, the women of everything, uh, Miss Finita Dewi. Uh, Miss Kavin, raise your hand. And then, okay. And then we have Kak Madehari Santosa, uh, the one from Singaraja Bali. And uh, thank you. And we will have, probably you are familiar with this baby face, uh, cute, handsome boy. Daniel Widiatama from Yogyakarta. Daniel, raise your hand, Daniel. Hello, everyone. Daniel. Hey, yeah. So, okay, cool. And then we still have three or four beautiful ladies. Kanini, you are in Manchester there. I hope you are feeling warmer with your uh, jacket or sweater. Okay. And then Kak Nani is now in Manchester, but she is actually uh, what is it, a teaching staff at Satya Wacana Christian University in Salatika. And then we have Lutfi. Lutfi. Uh, Lutfi is in Cirebon. And then we have Celia from Universitas Muhammadiyah Purwokerto. And then we have Grace. Hello, Grace. Uh, okay. Cool. Hi. No, I am I'm seeing you are very similar to Nanny. Your face is very similar to Nanny's. Both of you are beautiful. <laughs> okay, and I'll keep I'll keep the three, what is it, guest stars later uh, until the second sessions so that the participants are curious who they are. Actually they, they can see uh, the labels or the names at their screens. All right, so do I speak too fast or what? What do you think? Okay, so far, no need All to right. worry, Pa. Okay, cool. Thank you very much, Pa Jati and Pa Harry. I think we can start. Uh, we have collected some questions from the participants from the previous sessions. Okay, and we will start from the president, Pa President. Uh, at that time, you talked about artificial intelligence, and yes. one of the app is the Easy Bot. Eh, sorry, not Easy Bot, Essay Bot. And uh, we are recommending students to use the Essay Bot to help them write an essay. There is a question about. Uh, originality and plagiarism. Can you, uh, what is it, raise this issue about originality and plagiarism? Bajati. Yeah, the essay board, how it works when you put in the uh, sentence, the, the topic sentence that you want to write to develop a paragraph, the essay board will give you like 20 type of paragraph. And then uh, when you click one paragraph, then um, the essay bot will ask you questions like, do you want to rephrase this? Should I rephrase it for you? When you click yes, or the student click yes, then uh, the machine will uh, reword all of those paragraphs, become brand new paragraph. Now, uh, the question is, can turn it in to tag that's, that's uh, stolen from somewhere and then um, adjusted by a robot. Actually, I tried that several times. The turn it in, the turn it in, because that's created by their friends, the turn it in 
set that's original. So original, but written by the robot. Uh, of course, the ideas is uh, the clicking fingers is from the student. So if the question can plagiarism uh, detected there, it, they cannot detect that because it's already um, rephrased by the essay board. That's what I goes. Oh, okay. Uh, but Jati, can you probably clarify the essay board? Does this application actually help them write an essay or probably more about reading uh, skills? That's, that's more on a reading skill. Um, right. Because okay. when you write an essay, it's not, it's not helping writing an essay actually. It gives you a lot of information. The students in more than about paragraph, they paraphrase the paragraph, but then if you connect one paragraph to another paragraph, it doesn't make any sense. Still, need human to think how to connect those two paragraphs. If you, if you uh, just submit that, that way without a human touch there and creativity and more critical thinking, put that in the context and so on, will become a very bad essay. Yeah. All right. So again, reading skill is still important. Uh, coming very back important. to the issue of uh, originality, uh, one question also goes to pa Made, pa Heri. Uh, you talk about the story, uh, what is it? Uh, yes, story making. Yeah. And how can we raise the issue of originality from students story making here? Pa Heri? Yeah, thank you, Pak Agus. Yes, one of the most uh, question uh, uh, issue is about how to be original in your story. And it is true that it is not easy to be original. Uh, there are three ways that I did to maintain this uh, originality of uh, the students' works. The first one is that uh, I explain uh, and provide clear stages. So there are like seven or eight, even nine stages, and every stage is uh, level or scaffolded with clear instruction, clear aim, and also clear evaluation. So every stage is like uh, assessed. Uh, for example, in the beginning, uh, I provided some samples, some good samples. So they have like pictures in their mind what uh, a good story is, yeah, uh, which is already published, uh, available publicly, and uh, accepted by the uh, global community, for example. And then uh, the second one is, uh, to make it original, you have to make it personalized, as Pajati already said. So the concept here is called personalized learning. So there are seven principles of personalized learnings. I don't mention that one, but some of them are, you have to make a, or to have a universal learning design. So meaning that the design that you created will apply to whatever condition it is. The second one is that you have to have uh, more likely project-based. So later I will talk uh, uh, in motivation issue, what is the difference of students doing project and project-based learning? Uh, that's that's uh, create the originality uh, also uh, becomes uh, more original yeah, with the students. Another thing that I do is using a technique called text conversion technique. So in making a story, especially narrative, you can, it is, it is unlikely, yes, it is unlikely to be possible to be very original. What I have with my students, uh, they said that, yeah, Harry, I tried to be original and I think it is original, but then when I search with, uh, Google, and I found that my story is actually or has been done. So this is like creating a, a song, for example, because this is the issue of creativity. And uh, there are only uh, particular notes in, in music, for example. But then 
the issue of creativity as a part of soft skills uh, will be very important here. So in text conversion technique, you can converse, oh, sorry, convert uh, particular elements of story, whether you want to convert in the setting or change the setting or plot or conflict and so on. So these three things are basically uh, the way I deal with originality of the students' work by Agus. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, right. So the issue of personalized learning and also uh, scaffolding for each stage of learning that is quite important to guarantee the uh, what do you call it? the the originality. Okay. Thank you for a very clear explanations and again about honesty, about plagiarism, about originality. I have one question that is still connected with that issue about students who sometimes cheat each other, where especially when they do the, uh, what is it, the online assignment or online task. Uh, yes, uh, not all of our students are honest. Uh, Danielle, can you respond to that question, probably? OK, sure, Pak Agus, thank you for the question. Uh, I guess uh, we have ever responded to this one uh, weeks ago, but I would like to highlight maybe some of you are still curious. Uh, I will give a quick um, tips on how to do that. Uh, allow me to share my uh, screen for a while. So here is uh, what we can do. Uh, first of all, we can have uh, personalized questions or we should personalize the questions uh, like uh, Pak Jati and Pak uh, Madi has uh, have uh, mentioned earlier. And then in if you are using LMS, Moodle, Schoology and so on, so you can uh, distribute them ram randomly, not in a similar order. And then for the time, uh, the time allotment, you can make it pretty much short as short as possible, so they have no time to uh, talk to each other. And uh, this is uh, the important part, uh, as I write down here on my slide, that when we give them trust, then education begins. So the example is uh, right here. Uh, so this is a quote from my students, uh, my uh, one of our um, WhatsApp group, me and my students. So I taught them to uh, to use, uh, to review a text and hear what they showed. Uh, none of their work is uh, similar to each other. Uh, and for me, this is very uh, promising that uh, when we give them trust, when we uh, already give them uh, instructions, so let them work on it and yeah, just put our trust to them. It works. Thank you. Fantastic. I got a new keyword, trust, yeah. for uh, their, uh, what is it, their originality. All right, so again, yeah. testing or assignment is probably is one way of, of uh, assessment, probably. And then uh, that's also one way of, uh, what is it, identifying whether uh, students are learning very well or not. Now I will move to my friend that is far away in Manchester, Miss Nanny. Miss Nanny is dealing with how to evaluate students. We are having lots of students with different learning styles. Can you suggest something or the best way to evaluate or to assess students with different learning styles? Nanny. Yep. So yeah, uh, thank you, Pagus. Uh, there are quite a number of uh, questions from my session the last time that what shall a teacher, um, a teacher do when they encounter students with different learning styles or different environments? Um, should we make a different shaded evaluation? And I think it's always it's always good to actually differentiate um, different evaluation from uh, for students, especially because we're using technology and the use of technology actually enable quite a number of variation in evaluation. 
um, rather than we're actually having an offline, um, we have an offline class. With technology, we can actually um, differentiate different tasks and different evaluation. And I understand that this put a lot of stress in teachers because then you are forced to actually create a different kind of evaluation. But I believe that by understanding the different styles of your students, you can actually um, assist them in learning better rather than uh, making a general questions or general evaluation. Um, this also comes to a question where we're trying to teach online and how actually our evaluation must be different. And again, I think the other panelists, especially Daniel has already talk about um, how to how to personalize and it it can uh, it can avoid cheating that we have already discussed about it can make it more engaging it, it can make it more meaningful because we try to cater students with different uh, different styles different ability and such so I guess um, I think every teacher actually have an insider information on different learning styles. And it's, and, and as, I, as I told you a long time ago during my presentation that you are the expert. As a teacher, you are actually the expert of the learning environments of your students. And so you're the one who actually have enough knowledge and all of us here uh, we're here to give you some um, pointers and some hints and some alternative technology. But at the end of the day, um, the teachers, you are all uh, the experts of your learning environment. So that's my answer, I think, I was Thank, thank you. you. All right, very comprehensive. Okay, so again, uh, giving uh, assessment uh, is very closely related to giving feedback. And the one who presented something about feedback is Lutfi, I think. Lutfi, are you there? Uh, oh, yes. OK, Lutfi. All right. Uh, connected to the questions to Nanny before, can you elaborate more on giving feedback to our large classes? OK, so yeah, this has become the big issue, especially for many teachers, because in Indonesia, we know that we have a uh, many number of students in the class. So, is it possible if we give a feedback for them? Uh, there are several tips actually that we can uh, choose to minimize our workload. The first is we can uh, we have to think that we don't need to give uh, we don't need to give a feedback for all students. And then the second one is try to focus on one to three aspects that we'd like to give feedback to our students. Do not think that we, 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 we will give a feedback for all the aspects of, uh, let's say, in students' writing. And then the next one is let the students uh, do a peer or self-feedback so that we can reduce the, our workload in giving feedback. But be careful in giving a meaningful, meaningful feedback, especially for the self and peer feedback. We have to also uh, try to provide a rubric for them. That's why they will know the criteria of what we, we are going to assess or we are, what we are going to give feedback. That's all, about it. All right. OK. Thank you very much, uh, Lutfi. OK. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, most of us are teachers, and then most of us have used uh, technology for uh, our teaching practice. And then there is a good question directed to uh, Finita, uh, especially when, when assessing the students. Should we include uh, the types of apps or softwares that the students use in our uh, assessment rubrics. Uh, Finita, your comments, please. Okay, thank you, Pa Agus. Um, yeah, let me review a little bit about my presentation in the first webinar. On my presentation, I was talking about a project, uh, a project which involved many different types of application. And then, yeah, uh, 
I also saw some of the questions uh, asking about whether or not I should uh, or teachers should uh, give assessment to the use of technology. There are two things that I can respond to this. The first one is since we are teaching language, so I usually focus on the language skills. Uh, if I don't want to uh, put technology skills or uh, the shiny technology into my uh, rubrics, then I will usually uh, give uh, option to my students. You can use tools A, B, or C. So I limit the use of the tools and then they can pick any of uh, the tools. I usually forbid my students using the underground uh, softwares, things like Photoshop or Corel Draw. Uh, usually, they don't have the licensed version of the uh, softwares. That's what I usually do for the first time. Second one, uh, sometimes, for example, when I give a project on digital storytelling, I also include some uh, technological skills, but uh, something which is related to the uh, digital story. For example, I usually include the visual literacy of my students, like the relevance of uh, images, voice, uh, images into the, the stories or the relevance of the soundtrack that they use into the story, things like that. So it's more on how they pick some uh, technological things, not uh, on the choices of the application itself. I think that's what I can answer from that question, Pagus. All right. Uh, thank you, Vinita. And then, ooh, uh, what is it? The time runs very fast. And oh. this is 23 uh, past uh, 10. And then we will have only uh, seven minutes uh, to go. Let me go very quickly. So. Uh, now we will discuss about the communications of uh, students and teachers. We have covered something about assessment, feedback, and so on and so forth. Uh, at that time in the previous webinar, I remembered pa Toar, Kakak Toar talked about computer-mediated communications. Kakak Toar, uh, can you, there is a question uh, whether the CMC communicated, uh, sorry, computer mediated communications can facilitate close or probably intimate communications between students and teachers. Okay, thank you, Pak Agus. Um, well, um, I think this one CMC is one possible um, tools for teachers and students to communicate in this era of. Um, school from home or teaching from home, learning from home. What else can teacher use to communicate? You can, um, the teacher can use telephone call, but of course it's too expensive. Or um, video call probably is even more, uh, take uh, more data or quota. So CMC is one possible way for teachers to contact with the students. Um, probably not all levels of um, education, yeah, because probably um, as they left elementary school students, they will not have their own um, phone, but they could uh, have uh, the teacher probably could have a chat with the parents and the parents could um, forward it to the students. But um, like I said in my presentation, it's not the teacher and the students. Um, they don't have to talk about the, the teachers um, can ask other questions related to lessons, for example. They could ask about the uh, wellness of the student. They could ask about um, yeah, the family condition, something like that. It doesn't have to be about um, the lesson. Um, probably, of course, it, it would be very different when the com with the communication in the classroom where the teacher could talk directly to the students and could um, have an eye contact, but CMC have their own features, something like that. But um, this is not the, the same with the face-to-face -face communication in the classroom, but this is one possible way for teachers to get connected to their students, something like that, to summarize. Thank you, uh, Kaka Toar. All right, so uh, now it's about the technology, it's about the applications, uh, 
I have one question that is probably more philosophical. And I think uh, I still have Celia and uh, Grace uh, to respond to this answer, uh, which uh, at that time you highlighted that we should put people first, content second, and technology is the last. So what actually did you mean with this term? People first, content number two, and technology is number three, or the last one. Grace or Celia first? This is Celia. <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK. OK, thank you for the question, Pak Agus. Well, I will start with um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It covers basic needs and then psychological needs and then self-fulfillment needs. And then uh, we know that it's difficult for people or for students to focus on tasks like learning if their uh, basic and psychological needs are not being met. And many of us right now are worried about uh, our health, our family's health, and then maybe some people struggle with that uh, finan uh, financial condition and then physical and social distancing are not easy at all for us. So I think that's why uh, in our class, in our emergency remote teaching, we can provide a social connection, not a stressor for our students. And maybe the question right now should not be, how do I put uh, my class online? Instead, it should be, how do I best my student uh, to meet the learning objectives in this kind of uh, situation? And maybe I should point out that people first, content second, and technology third is not just a statement for this emergency remote teaching in this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, but it should be, it should always be our mantra as educators. Maybe that's all for me. Okay, Chris, do you have something to add? Uh, I think Celia sums it uh, pretty well. So yeah, I think that's enough. I, right. I don't have anything I have to add. Uh, okay, all right. So one very light, uh, probably it's it's a common problem uh, in many areas of Indonesia. Many people uh, live in uh, areas with limited bandwidth and also with uh, low quality of gadget. Sometimes when we use a high, what is it? Uh, uh, an application that require high technology, it's, it's uh, becoming a problem. Can you respond to this issue, Grace or Celia? Uh, okay, so uh, again, actually, uh, yeah, this is related really with what uh, Celia already explained. So we do really need to consider, uh, yeah, uh, our students, our environments as well. And like what uh, Muneni said, like all of you teachers are the expert in your class. So um, yeah, so we should really base it on that. So I mean, um, don't force, don't force the technology on your students. So uh, yeah, and um, I recall a question as well, like, uh, like how should we use this technology? Like what technology are uh, like uh, have no cost and like uh, have unlimited time to record the video? Uh, yes, but I mean, uh, there is no such thing as perfect <laughs> things right now, right? It all requires uh, even just a small cost. So um, yeah, so we just need to yeah uh, choose the technology wisely. And of course, if you really want to know more, uh, tomorrow Pak Agus will talk about it more, right Pak Agus? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, exactly like that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, all right. So, uh, okay, Grace, thank you very much. All right, so it's uh, 10.31. So, but I, I want Pa Jati to come up. Pa Jati, please show up. Pa Jati, we miss you. Ah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Pa Jati, I want you to respond because most of the apps are now using the artificial intelligence, okay. especially the mobile apps. So, uh there is like somebody who is worried 
whether we we will face more risk or instead uh, we we should be working in partner with artificial intelligence pa jati yeah um, going to be very short one we have to be friend with art- artificial intelligence actually uh, there are a lot of essay bot similar like quill bot they can refresh and so on uh, in math area there are uh, scimath.com photomath and there are many more in physics and also in other subject now the key is we have to make friend with those uh, artificial intelligence artificial intelligence is everything that has a pattern that's consistent will be uh, taken over by ai so we have to be ready yeah uh, like translating for instance slowly it will be taken by ai news reader news broadcaster it's going to be uh, ai no, no longer human yeah so the the people should working together closely with ai and then the human should uh, play roles at different tasks some people got confused whether they ai will take our job no they will help us they will take some part of our task the regular task uh, the patterns that has pattern and so on will be taken by robot yeah but not our job yeah with the thinking capacity as a human yeah so no need to worry about that but we need to learn and embrace uh, the uh, this small robot pak agus very good thank you so ai is not an uh, enemy ai is a partner that's what i can catch from uh, jati so i think that uh, closes the uh, what is it the first sections of our session today answering the question from the previous uh, webinar or anyone uh, will add something before we move to uh, section number two. No? Okay, so if everything is fine, uh, we will now invite uh, Fajaruddin, Winda, and Ibu Ina, our special guest stars, and uh, all the team members, you can stay here, you can also enjoy your coffee, uh, but I want Pa Jati to be here with us, uh, the president, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here, but will all not right. have my <laughs> coffee. No coffee for me. Huh? You, you, you are not drinking coffee anymore? Here. Oh, wait. Finish. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, now, uh, there are now 267 participants joining us. So, and today we will, we are having three guest stars. Uh, let me first call Fajaruddin Akbar. Uh, wave your hand, Fajar. To, yes, Hello. okay. So, Fajar, so far I know is a student or pre-service teacher, am I right? Yes, and Fajar is based yes, absolutely. in... Okay, Fajar is based in Karawang, betul ya? Karawang, yeah. all right, cool. <laughs> and then now the second uh, guest star we have is Miss Winda Medianti. Hello, Winda. Okay, Fajar is from uh, Karawang, uh, Winda is from Kalimantan. Is that right? Okay, uh, right. Uh, Winda, uh, can you, you are from Tamiang Layang. Is there one city in Kalimantan Selatan or Kalimantan Tengah? Uh, you are still muted, uh, Winda. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Tamiang Layang is actually one of the regencies in uh, Central Kalimantan. Kalimantan Tengah. Okay, Central Kalimantan. Thank you, uh, Winda. And then uh, now we have Ibu Mutmaina atau Kak Ina. Hello, Kak Ina. Okay. Uh, so Fajar is a pre-service teacher. Winda is a teacher. Uh, high school, yeah, Winda, yeah. Uh, junior high. 
Juni High School. And Ibu Ina is a faculty staff at the university in West Sulawesi. Am I right, yes. Ibu Ina? Yes, yes. yes. Right. Can you mention I'm... the name of the higher education institutions of yours? Uh, my university name is Al Asharia Mandar University. This is the first university in uh, West Sulawesi. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. So we are now having three people from different places, one from Java, one from Kalimantan, and one from uh, Sulawesi. All right. Uh, and they are coming as a special guest stars. Uh, today. Uh, let me uh, ask Pa Jati, the president, uh, we have three this, uh, these three uh, special guest stars. Can you share uh, kenapa mereka yang diundang? Kita punya ribuan kemarin. Ya. We have thousands, but we have uh, you have selected these three uh, people to go or to come with us today. Pa Jati. Um, ya, yeah. thank you. Jadi uh, begini, uh, selectionnya sebetulnya tidak ada selection yang aneh-aneh. Hanya I pay attention to the three. Eh, memang ada mahasiswa yang sangat keren seperti Fajar. Ikut banyak webinar, webinarnya itu ikut semua. Then also uh, other webinar from overseas. Yeah. So uh, I want Fajar later to share wha, uh, what did you learn from the webinar and so on and so on and what's the benefit that you get, gitu kan, kira-kira. Terus ada Ibu uh, Winda. Nah, Ibu Winda ini kan di daerah Tamiang Layang tuh lumayan remote di, 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 di apa di Kalimantan gitu ya. Yang orang mungkin teman-temannya malas lah kira-kira ikut webinar ngapain buang-buang buang-buang kuota something like that. So, uh, ingin melihat lebih ke motivasi, um, apa yang sudah dilakukan, punya mimpi apa sih, kira-kira gitu kan. Uh, itu. Terus, um, Ibu Bu Ina ini um, agak unik juga, ikut webinarnya ITEL cukup panjang, gitu kan. Terus ikut yeah. webinar di mana-mana, terus tiba-tiba jadi speaker di salah satu webinar di India, gitu. Yes. Kenapa nggak diundang di Indonesia, tapi tiba-tiba di India gitu. Jadi mungkin yeah. ada keunikan-keunikan <laughs> yang perlu yeah. kita kita dengar lah kira-kira gitu. Okay. Uh, ya, yeah, ITEL in general itu pengennya sih um, sangat informal menjangkau para guru dan para mengajar dan juga mahasiswa, tapi lebih ke guru sih sebetulnya. Kita ingin menjangkau itu supaya bisa bereksperimen bersama dengan uh, laju cepatnya teknologi. Kira-kira itu, Pak Agus. Yes, okay. Thank you, uh, Pak Jati. Very good. So, uh, Ibu Ina, uh, you are, or Pak Fajar, uh, also Winda, you are selected because you are webinar enthusiast. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. And now, uh, can you tell the the participants or our yes our participants today uh, what webinars uh, you have uh, attended recently? We will start from Ibu Ina, yang paling jauh dari Sulawesi. Please. <laughs> Thank you very much for the time. Uh, before I start to uh, speak, uh, giving my opinion and suggestion today in this uh, item. Um, this is an honor for me to stand in here with the ITEL uh, program. And then there are many webinars I attended. Uh, Cambridge University, Match Milan, Microsoft, GetWeb, Zyver, NGL, National Geographic Learning, uh, even Bright, Bright Talk, uh, banyaklah so many. Tetapi yang menjadi pioner webinar saya yang uh, paling highlight itu the, my first uh, webinar, uh, this is from my talk. Yeah. I have many learn from ITEL team, uh, the presentation. Actually, you are uh, my idols. I like uh, when you are prepared the material about the screenshot, the PPT. I have learned uh, most uh, from uh, ITEL uh, team and ITEL uh, uh, webinar. So I following all of the webinar from ITEL and then I, I can create 
I can design my presentation, my PPT, and material based on uh, this uh, ITEL uh, webinar. I, All right. I, this is, uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Bu Ina. Fajal? Okay. Uh, thank you. Firstly, I would like to thank you. Is my voice clear? Yes. Okay. Very clear. I would, I would like to thank ITEL team, Mr. Agnes, Mr. Jati, and everyone, the ITEL team organization. Uh, to be honest, I would like to uh, greet and say thank you to all the participants, my friend that attending this uh, webinar, but I don't think I have forever time for that. <laughs> and also, I'm going to speak bilingually. Kalau kata Pak Jati dan ITEL team, campur sari. So, uh, actually, the first webinar that I have been attend is from the American English e feature. It was last year, even before this situation. So, actually, I, I've been attending, ya, saya sudah Sedepajar sudah sedikitnya uh, hadir webinar beberapa kali ya sebelum booming <laughs> di Facebook waktu masih biasa saja gitu dari American English e Teacher tentang MOOC. But uh, if I can choose the best webinar, I should say organize uh, that organize is from the Pearson English. Pearson English is the best webinar overseas because they provide a lot of I should say materials products from their uh, I should say website and organization and also Cambridge because recently uh, Cambridge uh, I should say organized the so many webinars banyak webinar yang dihadirkan oleh Cambridge uh, Cambridge online Asia Cambridge at home untuk menemani rekan-rekan uh, guru mungkin uh, para pendidik di seluruh dunia untuk mengajar bahasa Inggris and for Indonesia, for Indonesia webinar, yes, of course, Indonesia Technology Enhanced Language Learning is the best webinar that I attend, of course. <laughs> Even though there's a lot of webinars called so ups in this during, uh, you know, situation, pandemic situation. Yes, I should say that from the overseas, I should say that Pearson English is the best webinar that I have ever attended, and Indonesia is, of course, the only I felt. Okay. Thank you. That's all I can yeah. say. Thank you. Uh, Winda, please. Oke, okay, thank you. Um, saya sudah mengikuti beberapa webinar, diantaranya adalah British Council and ITEL, kemudian saya juga mengikuti webinar kesehatan jiwa dari komunitas peduli skizofrenia Indonesia, juga ada sempat ikut webinar IGI Sulawesi Tenggara, Kemudian juga uh, yang terakhir ini Talk With Us, Media Partner Sehat Jiwa. Dan untuk uh, ITEL sudah dari season pertama saya follow dan sampai sekarang juga. Fantastic. Oke. Okay. So not only about language teaching, ya yeah, Winda. Yeah. You also are interested in many other topics. Uh, that is yeah. very good. By the way, how did you get the information about the webinar? Fajar, you have attended so many webinars. How, how did you get the information from? Okay, firstly, of course, from the website that uh, is published by Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook. <laughs> and also, I joined uh, some WhatsApp group and Telegram group that organized by educators worldwide. But most recently, is from the Middle West, case, case A, Saudi Arabia. Yeah. So they they share a lot of webinar information, webinar invite link in the group. So I All know right. that information from those groups. It's really beneficial for me. Really. Okay, cool. So again, joining many social, uh, what is it, WhatsApp group or messaging yes. groups in line, in Telegram and WhatsApp, also following the media, social media of some institutions, one of the tips, okay. Ibu Ina, how did you get the information? Do you uh, you get specially uh, invited by a committee in India? Can you tell us <laughs> yeah. something about that? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, same with uh, Pajar Rudin. We have uh, social media, uh, some of social media, some of the community. We have uh, some of the community, international community, for example, like uh, methodological community, work led community, Microsoft uh, team community, so, so many, so many, so many community. Uh, then the information, I think this is open. Uh, while you online, uh, the information is wide open to us. Uh, this is uh, kembali lagi ke orangnya, mau, mau, dapat, okay. mau tangkap informasinya atau gimana. All right. WhatsApp okay. group, WhatsApp group uh, Telegram group, Facebook yes. group. Yes. Yeah. All right. 
Uh, Winda, do you have a different uh, what is it technique of getting that information? Uh, I actually get the information from Instagram and then from social media, of course. Okay. All right. So, okay. Cool. So, so, you are the three people who give a bright examples of the benefits of using social media. Yeah, and then we take, we take the positive sides of using the social media. All right, now uh, tell us uh, the very concrete benefits of attending those thousands of webinars. Uh, we will start from Ibu Ina. Uh, there are many uh, benefits, actually. Banyak sekali kelebihannya. Yang pertama, this is upgrade, upgrade our knowledge. Mm. And we get a community having friends from yes. around the world. And then this is the very higher from me as an academic, uh, sebagai dosen, as a lecturer at, uh, in university, uh, okay. to invite to be a speaker uh, to another uh, country. This is, uh, All right. I think this is a very <laughs> uh, good uh, reason uh, to following the webinar. Uh, our friends and our community uh, monitoring us from our me uh, social media and then they invite us to speak. Uh, I, I, I think uh, this is one of the uh, benefits, from, uh, especially for me. All right, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Ibuina. Uh, Fajar and Winda, I want you to uh, probably get the issue how the webinars that you have joined will be very beneficial for your students, uh, for your students. Then again, what I mean is how the webinars uh, improve your capacity so that students will take the benefits of you joining the webinars. Uh, who should uh, come first, Fajar or Winda? Fajar, it's okay. Oh, Fajar, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, actually, because I'm still a free service teacher, but Yes, I have started my experience in teaching in some English courses and online courses. So I think that in my experience, the thing that could be the benefit for my students that first, because I'm a digital teaching enthusiast, so I, I knew a lot of digital teaching tools, digital teaching websites, and a lot of resources. And from Cambridge, there are some kind of strategies, techniques that they are presented in their webinars, such uh, for reading, for speaking, like CLIL and something like that. So I think the benefits for my students and maybe uh, as my as uh, from the perspective for me as a student is from webinars, teachers or, or educators will get so many information such as tools, web, uh, online tools in this current digital era, and of course strategies, methodologies, technique, and resources. I think that's all I can say. All right, thank you. Now, Winda, your turn. Oke, okay. um, jadi saya mendapatkan banyak hal menarik dari mengikuti webinar ITEL ini Dan hal yang saya pelajari yang pertama adalah uh, Mengikuti webinar ini bisa membuka cara berpikir baru Atau it opens new way of thinking Kemudian yang kedua juga membuat saya bisa melihat banyak cara berpikir yang berbeda Atau thinking alternatives untuk poin yang pertama tadi, saya mencatat ada statement menarik dari yang terhormat Pak Jati. Beliau pada season yang pertama itu eh, mengatakan seperti ini, membuat statement seperti ini. Tidak semua harus seperti yang kita mau, seperti itu. Nah, kalau kembali ke sikon saya sebagai pengajar, saya seringkali expect atau mengharapkan beberapa hal berjalan seperti yang saya mau. Dan pada kenyataannya, saya tidak bisa memaksakan kehendak saya ke siswa saya. Kalau misalnya saya punya 20 orang siswa dalam kelas dan semuanya harus pintar bahasa Inggris. Nah, seperti itu. Sedangkan e, mereka mungkin punya talenta dan punya e, keahlian, punya bakat di bidang tertentu, tidak tidak di bahasa misalnya Mungkin saja mereka sukanya di olahraga Atau di musik Suka menggambar seperti itu Jadi itu sangat e, membuat saya melihat diri saya sendiri Kemudian mengevaluasi diri saya e, Benar juga Ada benarnya juga Apa yang dikatakan oleh Pak Jati Statement Pak Jati Kemudian yang kedua Statement yang kedua ini saya ambil dari e, Yang terhormat Ibu Vinita 
saat beliau dan tim ITEL datang ke Kalimantan Selatan pada saat itu ada kegiatan TBE yang diikuti oleh ribuan guru se-Kalimantan dari Kalimantan Selatan, Kalimantan Tengah dan sangat menarik sekali statement beliau pada saat itu dan kemudian pada season yang pertama season yang pertama keluar lagi statement beliau seperti ini e, yang penting proses bukan hasil akhir nah e, ini membuat saya mempunyai e, berbagai alternatif cara berpikir bahwa iya ada benarnya juga selama ini saya product oriented atau berorientasi pada hasil, hasil. Dan saya melupakan, saya lupa kalau uh, ada juga yang lebih penting ketimbang hasil yaitu proses. Proses juga sangat penting. Hasil akan mengikuti, hasil akhir akan mengikuti. Nah, jadi saya mengevaluasi diri saya. Apakah selama ini uh, saya sudah memberikan kesempatan kepada peserta didik saya untuk menikmati atau untuk enjoy the process of proses belajar, apakah mereka menikmati dan enjoy, atau jangan-jangan mereka selama ini tertekan, atau tidak enjoy karena banyaknya tugas, seperti itu seperti itu sih, kurang lebih oke, okay. alright, thank you uh, Winda, uh, kameranya nggak dihidupin, kenapa? <laughs> <laughs> ah, ya itu kan cantik alright, so again so for those who do not speak bahasa Indonesia, Winda has just mentioned that uh, again some benefits of Uh, joining the webinars and uh, she has got many lessons from the webinars and some philosophical statements from presidents of ITEL and also uh, Finita. It's not the results, it's the process and then we cannot expect everybody to be like what we want. Uh, so that's uh, the lessons that Winda has said. With us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all right. To make use of the limited time, uh, I want you now each to share. Probably, uh, uh, no. Let me ask Fajar. Fajar, uh, have you done the PPL or uh, teaching practice at schools? Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, uh, I have done my, you know, the PPL or the PLP, the teacher micro teaching, micro teaching. Yeah. Micro -teaching. Right. Okay. Cool. So what what I am asking now is probably how you will how will you practice the lesson that you have learned from the webinars uh, with your students again for the benefits of the students. Okay. okay? So Fajar. Uh, Please, a very short, uh, brief answer for that question. Okay. Uh, actually, because uh, I, I currently don't teach at school, but uh, at an online course, but uh, the most thing that I can use from the webinars that I attend is the resources. The, web, the resources from the website, the digital teaching tools, and some, uh, some of the presentation slides and the PDF that the webinars share. I think that's all I can do. Okay. All right. Okay. Before we move to Ibu Ina and Winda, I have to remind uh, the participants. Actually, you can post questions uh, so that uh, the panelists probably can answer later in session number three. Uh, you can post the question at the question and answer sessions. Uh, that, so that's uh, the information that I will uh, I need to. Share. So again, now let's go back to Ibu Ina. How will you share the lessons uh, you have cut from the webinar with your students at you know, your university? Yeah, uh, thank you very much. So the first time when we got online, uh, when the pandemic, like during the COVID-19, uh, sebenarnya saya kemarin push, yeah, I push to the technology to use the technology but i forget it to make uh, the, the 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 fun the fun material i forget about the student uh, emotional so after uh, following some of webinar i got uh, i upgrade my knowledge and then i uh, design again uh, my materials my syllabus and my uh, rps uh, my curriculum in my uh, subject i try to change my uh, remote uh, teaching. So I uh, are, uh, co uh, coordinate again my uh, teaching and learning process in the simple uh, interaction, simple material, and then 
uh, to make student quickly uh, respond. So I, after uh, three weeks, I give for the student a questionnaire about their feeling, the emotion, the emo their, um, about their emotion, emotion aspect. Yeah, the answer most of the student under pressure by uh, during uh, online uh, process. Why they are under pressure? Because we are as a teacher, when we are teaching in the online, we bring our face-to-face -face condition into the virtual classroom. This is our problem. Jadi kendalanya kita ini menginginkan kelas face-to-face -face kita itu kondisi, the face-to-face -face classroom condition same in the virtual classroom. This is a very happy many challenge when we remote our teaching by online. There are many problem with the student condition. They have no quota, the bandwidth, and then uh, the weather. Seperti sekarang ini uh, in West Sulawesi, we uh, in this uh, uh, there are two months we are in the rain, uh, rain, uh, rain, uh, rain uh, weather. So hal-hal uh, inilah yang memicu saya setelah after uh, following webinar the the blessing uh, benefitnya I. A contraction again, recontraction my materials, my uh, uh, my materials, my my technology be familiar with the technological tool. Jadi kondisi siswanya, uh, we back to student uh, student target what the uh, student need. Jadi kembali lagi ke kebutuhan siswanya. Kebutuhan siswanya kalau siswanya mahasiswa kita. Uh, familiar with the technological tool-nya itu only WhatsApp. Why we we use WhatsApp? It's not my that thing. Yeah, All right. Thank okay. Good. Thank you. So, Winda, very last, very short, limited time. Uh, <laughs> what is the plan of using uh, the lessons you have learned with your uh, students? You are still muted, Winda. I'm sorry. Yeah, my future plan is I'm going to make podcasts as many as possible. This is the platform. Yeah, this is the platform I will use to broadcast or to share uh, everything that is my concern. And then uh, I hope everybody will um, listen to it. And I hope it is useful for everybody. All right. Thank you. Podcast is a nice resource. So everybody will like podcast. So again, thank you very much, Winda, Fajar, and Ibu Inna. We are happy all. Uh, we are thank all you. happy to have you here with us with 269 participants. Uh, oh, today. yeah. Yes, okay, Winda. Pak Moderator, uh, yes. can I can I ask uh, more time, please? Uh, ada teman saya dari Batam, dia titip, uh, saya hello, Ibu Ria Natal dari Batam. Dia sangat mengidolakan tim dari ITEL, semuanya yeah. idolanya dia. Luar kemudian, biasa. <laughs> kemudian juga menambahkan, saya ingin memotivasi semua teman-teman yang ada di uh, webinar ini. Saya terus terang saja ini ada di desa, namanya Desa Matabu ya. Kalau dari desa ini ke kota, it is about four to five kilometers. So wow. uh, talking about the uh, the uh, signal here, it is very kadang timbul, kadang tenggelam sinyalnya. So saya bilang tadi di awal kita adalah pejuang sinyal semuanya. Uh, ada juga teman saya yang bilang kita penjaga tol langit. Karena kita merasa ikut webinar ini sangat-sangat banyak sekali manfaatnya, dampaknya. Dan juga um, ini juga salah satu bukti pengembangan keprofesian berkelanjutan. Khususnya saya sebagai pengajar merasakan sekali. Ini merupakan wujud PKB kita. Dan saya ingin memotivasi teman-teman semuanya apapun yang uh, menjadi kendala. Mau kendala susah jaringan, lelet atau apapun itu jangan sampai menghambat uh, kita untuk terus maju. Untuk uh, seperti kata Pak Jati, kalau di tempat lain itu ada sesuatu yang bling-bling gitu ya, shining, shimmering, splendid. Walaupun kita ada di pelosok, paling nggak kita tahu seperti itu. Ya, betul. Uh, mungkin sedikit juga okay. dari saya uh, okay. sebelum di, di closing ya. Jadi uh, motivasi kepada teman-teman, saya harapkan setelah mengikuti webinar seperti ini uh, bisa juga mengorganize uh, webinar yang sama. Saya rasa uh, ini juga bisa kita lakukan sama-sama kita sudah dapat uh, tekniknya prosedurnya seperti apa jadi kita juga bisa melaksanakan webinar Alhamdulillah nanti rencana kami juga akan mengadakan uh, international conference uh, webinar kemudian pesan saya uh, untuk uh, time item kalau bisa ya 
uh, adalah materi nanti yang bisa diberikan kepada kita bersifatnya workshop kepada teman-teman dosen atau guru. Kemudian ada juga mengangkat materi-materi uh, terkait local wisdom. Sebenarnya Indonesia itu sangat kaya ya, kaya dengan berbagai lokal wisdom yang bisa kita lestarikan dengan memanfaatkan mereka lokal lokal wisdom ini diangkat menjadi model learning material atau dia juga menjadi model salah satu model pembelajaran kita kita kan dari berbagai daerah mungkin akan memperkenalkan juga lokal wisdom saya yang bisa diangkat untuk melestarikan lokal wisdom kemudian bagaimana pengembangan karakter ke depan generasi gen alpha ini yang gen alpha yang sekarang ini lagi SD ini ini penguatan karakter kebangsaan agar ya mumpung karena ini sekarang lagi lagi Pancasila ya jadi hari kelahiran Pancasila Bineta Tunggal Ika highlightnya di situ sih harapannya anak-anak kita ke depan ini yang gen alpha ini masih berbineka tunggal ika berkarakter Indonesia. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Ibu Ina. Pak Jati, many people expect more from ITEL. Pak Jati, your uh, command or your feedback, Pak Jati, as the president of ITEL. Waduh, kawat. <laughs> <laughs> Jadi ITEL itu kan tadinya awalnya iseng nih, ya uh, iseng, uh, orang ngopi, kurang ya. kerjaan. <laughs> um, Uh, temen-temen iseng juga gitu terus kumpul-kumpul uh, uh, ngobrol-ngobrol and then um, menjadi formal gitu jadi kalau uh, ekspektasinya banyak thank you very much tapi kita akan usahakan ya yang yang terbaik yang pasti uh, kita akan apa ya uh, ke grassroots kita tidak akan pakai hal-hal yang menakutkan lah gitu kita model anu aja lah underground saja nyantai nyantai saja istilah Pak Agus ngopi bareng lah uh, kalau kita ngopi bareng banyak ide yang muncul gitu kita sharing yeah. ada teknologi apa gitu jadi yeah. mungkin uh, lebih ke apa ya ke classroom uh, praktis ke, ke, yeah. lebih ke arah sana sih sebetulnya yeah. um, berharap boleh tapi jangan terlalu tinggi lah nanti kalau presidennya udah ganti nah itu boleh berharap <laughs> <laughs> Kalau Presiden Aitel mah nggak usah ganti kali ya. Ya, setuju. Setuju. <laughs> ya, okay. um, ini yes. untuk teman-teman uh, next round kalau mau bertanya bisa klik anu aja. Uh, Di Q&A gitu, Q&A itu. Selain Q&A ada raise hand, angkat tangan. Oh, yes. Ini yang sudah angkat tangan ada Sirli Rizky sama Fatim Anggita Sari. Enggak tahu angkat tangan beneran atau uh, kepencet. Gitu ya. Jadi kalau angkat tangan nanti akan di akan ditanya-tanya. Jadi silakan atau pakai Q&A juga boleh. Ya, Pak Agus. Oke, okay, thank you. So again, again so uh, Pak Jati statement closes uh, the section number two with the special guest stars. Once again, thank you Fajar, Ibu Ina and Winda. You are all inspiring other people today. Uh, I hope semuanya dapat berkah. Insyaallah di hari Pancasila kita ini semakin kompak. Amin. Okay, thank you. All right. Bye -bye. So uh, let us now move to session number three that is answering live questions from the participants, and we are inviting participants to raise hands if you want to extend the questions orally, or you can also type uh, the questions through the Q and A platform. And one more thing, I need to remind you that this webinar gives no or provides no certificate. So once again, this webinars and also the webinars that will follow after this will provide no certificate. But we are trying to come all the team, full team like this uh, in the following webinar so that everybody can say hello uh, if you miss uh, one of us, then you can at least say hello and see uh, our faces. All right. So again, uh, we are uh, looking forward to questions from the participants. Or uh, the host here is Miss Finita or Pa Jati. Yeah, um, aku juga aja berdua. Uh, saya sudah us? memasukkan uh, tandeman. Saya sudah uh, memasukkan Pak Bambang Yulianto. Alright, Pak Bambang Yulianto ini su sukanya 
Ya sukanya dressel dressel soalnya, jadi dikasih <laughs> mikrofon. Silakan Pak Bambang monggo. Pak Bambang kameranya dihidupin tadi udah dihidup kok. Ayo Pak Bambang silakan. <tuh> Halo Pak Bambang. Pak Bambang Tadi monitor. Ingat, kan? Tadi udah tampak gambarnya. Oh. Atau sambil menunggu Pak Bambang, Pak Jati bisa undang yang lain yang tadi sempat raise hand? Uh, saya coba, oke. Okay. Um, Ada Sherlyn Warrow. Ada Sherlyn yeah. Rizky itu. Uh, ya, yeah. Sherlyn Warrow sudah saya coba masukkan. Nah. sama Shirley sekalian ya atau satu-satu satu-satu kali pak satu-satu ya yeah. oke okay. oke okay. good morning Charlene hello you are still muted oh sorry oh oke okay. okay. just yeah. right. mute uh, yeah. oke okay. so Charlene yeah. can you introduce yourself and then uh, you raise your hand in our oh, yeah. uh, webinar here uh, it we assume that you have something to say Please, Charlene. Uh, okay, so let me introduce myself first. So I'm Charlene Waro. I'm actually from the uh, near Pak Toar, Kakak Toar's place. I was from Air Madidi, Kak Toar. <laughs> so from Manado, but now uh, currently I'm living in Balikpapan. So few years ago, I attended, I tell, uh, what is that? Um, core skill core skill, something like that, that was um, last time it was Pak Jati and the team came to Balikpapan and starting that day, I keep on following ITEL's movement. <laughs> so I was so grateful that I have this opportunity to be with uh, ITEL. And then uh, this time I raised my hand because I have a question. Yes. So. Last time when I joined, when I joined Pajati and the seminar during that time, a few years ago, I was working in a school. And right now I'm not working in a school anymore. I'm working in a private course. So that my my students right now are are the students who uh, who really come here to learn. So uh, I, I do not say that those students who come to school, they don't want to study, but as we know that we are all educators and, and we know that uh, mostly the students who come to school, many of them just come to see the friends or come to see their favorite teacher. And uh, maybe only few percent that want to uh, come to school to study. I mean, I mean to get the lesson I, i'm just i'm just coming here to study that's all N not every not every students like that but when it comes to the uh, private course like this uh, the students who come here are those who wants to learn my problem is that um, i have to meet the needs of the students and the needs of the parents because this is the uh, private course then um, some of the parents who bring their, their kids in this place, they wanted the product. So they want to have the finest product that we can produce. While when we are teaching the, the students, these pupils, they are really, really in need of love. <laughs> so they don't need only, um, what is that? Only the, the lesson, but they need care. So. In fact, uh, sometimes I was teaching them, for example, this five pages should be done this day. But because of this emotional problem of this kid, he cannot or she cannot finish the task during that day. And then the parents will complain. So how do you think, um, can you give us, can you give me an ins uh, insight how to cope with this since this is the institution where we have to provide a product or maybe i got the okay. wrong idea about this all right okay thank you charlene okay so we got the point and then you uh who do you want uh to answer your questions Pak Jati, Kakak Toar? oh well i do believe uh all the expertise in the ipel area so whoever all right please okay. 
So, okay, panelists, uh, anyone will respond to Charlene's problems? So Charlene is challenged with parents who have high demand of yeah, uh, the quality true. of the teaching process uh, where uh, she is teaching now. Uh, Pa Jati or Pa Harry or Nemi or Finita or anybody, please. Uh, I'm trying to answer to this, Pa Agus. Yes, please, Mada Harry. Thank you, Ma Salin. Uh, it is a very interesting issue and it's ongoing issue, actually. Uh, I would like to comment from several perspectives for now. First, why it happens? Because our educational culture and perspective consider ranking status is number one or score. So that means that we focus more on cognitive side only. Yeah, in fact, education covers more than that. Yeah, if you use, for example, taxonomies from uh, Castro and, and friends, Anderson and, and friends, there are three basically. So you have to cater for, or you have to look for cognitive sides, which is about their brains. Next, their affective side, which is about whether they know what to do, uh, what is right and what is wrong, and how they act into uh, the concepts that they understand, which is about psychomotor. Um, the next one, the next perspective I'm, I'm going to say is that there has been so many studies in the world and in Asian context, except Japan and South Korea tells that learning approaches of students in Asia, including Indonesia is or falls into surveys learning approach, meaning that they only study for score yeah. or for high GPA. There is another term in the perspective of student learning approaches called deep learning approach. This means that you study to understand. And this is what is the ideal that we, that we want to get. The problem is that with this cultural perspectives, what you can do to deal with this is that you have to know the motive of people going into your place to study. That is the reasons. So you have to know why they go to my place. Yeah, people will do more than is expected, expected when it benefits them. That's a common rule, yeah? So when they think that it can give benefits to them, they will perform their best. If you look from motivation perspective, there are so many types. Two of them are extrinsic motivation and intrinsic motivation. You can look from intrinsic, for example, what, what can I perform here? And then the extrinsic, for example, what can people see about my performance? In my context, I like to start with a pale blue dot image boot. If you are familiar with this, there is a picture taken by Voyager, that is the spaceship, before leaving the solar system. There is an image of Earth, and not so many people know about this picture. There is a small dot in, in the universe, and it is Earth. And the meaning for this is that our Earth is very small. What can you do to contribute into your life? So, this probably is not that easy for young kids, but then you know how to deal with this. I mean, still, what can you do? What can you, you know, be unique uh, uh, in your daily life? Not just to follow the, uh, the flows, for example, or just getting the score. Getting the score is important, I know. Yeah, because our system uh, asks for that. But, but I like the way you care for the students because care is a part of uh, emotional uh, intelligence uh, and also social things, you need also to touch that, that kind of thing. So, uh, and then you deal with pedagogies. So when you deal with uh, right relevant pedagogies, and then if you add with or integrate with tools, whatever it is, it can be 
a very con uh, traditional or low type of technologies uh, up into advanced technologies and it will go. Of course, you need to evaluate at the end. Sometimes it works in my place, it doesn't work in yours. So again, context is very important. So understand the cultural perspective, the perspectives around them, try to implement into your place and then evaluate. That's what I can share. Fantastic. Ini jawabannya melebihi jawaban seorang profesor guru besar. Luar biasa. Gitu ya, Charlene ya. I think that's comprehensive enough. And then we still have two other participants raising the hands and also uh, three questions in the Q&A. Uh, panelists, probably you can help uh, answer the questions in the Q&A platform. And then we will invite probably Ibu Sunarmi atau uh, Shirley dulu. Shirley mungkin bisa diundang Kak Finn atau Kak Jati. Uh, is, she is in. Oh, and she's out again. <laughs> uh, no, she's here. Oh, okay. Shirley, right. please, but you are still <laughs> muted, Shirley. Um. No, okay. So I think... Uh, yeah, he's, all right. Yeah. Uh, this is a question from uh, Ms. Uh, Sunarmi. Uh, dear panelists, my question is that what we can do to those who would not follow the learning in online uh, environment taken by teachers? Probably what Ibu Sunarmi here means is for those who leave the class or who miss the cl online classroom. Um, based online classroom, terus pertanyaannya? Uh, what we they don't do want to follow. Who miss our session? <laughs> yeah, that's 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 uh, begini. Kalau yang offline itu sebetulnya kalau kita mau jujur separuh kelas hilang. Dia nggak mau sebetulnya mau di kelas itu kan bisa hilang. Tapi kan dimarahin, pintunya dikunci <laughs> gitu kan. <laughs> kalau online. <laughs> Ya dunia bebas. Ya kalau dia nggak ikut di kelas, ya nggak bisa kita paksa. Kita nggak punya kunci ruangan gitu loh untuk mengunci bahwa mereka you have to be here. Oh, ya gurunya dihapusin juga nggak tahu kan. You are online, log in, terus ditinggal pergi. Komputernya nyala. Do we know that they learn? Jadi tolong dibedakan bahwa yeah. online and offline. Online kita nggak bisa maksa. Itu ya. Jadi, to make them come to your class online and attend full, it's very much depends on one, you personally, number two, your materials. Kayaknya gitu. Kayaknya gitu, kayaknya. Oke, oke. All right. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I like the idea. Itu karena sebetulnya uh, mahasiswa atau siswa sebetulnya nggak suka ketika di kelas. Tapi karena ada kita, kita yang melarang yeah. mereka. Tapi kalau online, mereka bisa uh, living kapan saja. Atau If bisa I can join ke kelas itu kan. Yeah. Sinita, please. Oke. Okay. Uh, I will connect it to Merdeka Belajar. <laughs> Bukan yang ke ala Mas Menteri, but uh, it's ala Finita. Uh, in my class, I know that uh, some of my students uh, would skip uh, the class if I do a Zoom meeting or a synchronous meeting like this. Then what I usually do is giving them options. I usually have a kind of choice boards for them. And when I give them task, uh, for example, I have six uh, different kinds of tasks and then they can pick uh, two out of six uh, tasks. I know that it's a bit difficult for us teachers to create uh, six tasks with similar burden dengan bobot yang mirip. But then by uh, having that, uh, I can give my students choices to do, uh, to go through the task itu bukan hanya tugas tapi juga nanti ada to read something they need to consult me and uh, do some other things but then by giving them choice uh, um, it's not, it's one of the ways to make them engage with uh, my lessons that's what i can say so they have freedom to choose uh, what kind of learning path that they want to go through 
All right, diberi pilihan. So you give choices. Pak Mada, but very short, just please. Very short, Pak. Uh, yes. Just okay. to add from Bu Vinita and Pak Jati. Yes, it is true. Uh, I just want to emphasize that we have to change our thinking. It is not the apps, yeah, but the design of the activities. Yeah, that's uh, with my students, for example, doing their thesis. Sometimes they use like the effect of Kahoot in reading, for example. It's not like that. So what you design for your activities using Kahoot, if it is advanced technologies, then that's the most important. So again, the task, the activities, then the right tools. All right. Thank you, but, uh, but Harry. So the design of the task, the design of the learning activities. Your command, Infinita's command, make me interested in uh, Iburia Natal Silitonga. This is from Batam, yeah? Uh, why, uh, she probably uh, thought that many teachers, our teachers, uh, are, what is it, find it difficult or many often skip the brainstorm uh, stage before going to the uh, activity or many people or many teachers focus more on tasks so go directly to the task and they skip what we call probably the building knowledge of the field and they go directly to the uh, joint uh, activity or joint learning any feedback on this area English teachers many times skip or probably is a lack of brainstorming uh, skills. Uh, any feedback on this issue? Silahkan. Siapa saja boleh? Neni, are you okay? <laughs> I'm a bit sleepy actually because it's already like whole night through for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Brainstorm. <laughs> Can I okay. say something about brainstorming? Yeah. I think this is, um, I think I can understand the, the focus on completing the task because again, um, as Pak Madi Heri said, um, a lot of our culture is pretty much um, focusing on um, right. producing, producing something. Jobs. And finishing, finishing, finishing tasks is, is, is one of the manifestation of having a product because once you finish the task, you have the product. So I think we, we, need, to, we need to start including some activities like brainstorming um, to actually, this is interesting because we rarely ask our students to think. I mean, to think, really think. Instead of just completing tasks, we also need to actually ask them to think. Um, so it is understandable, for example, if um, fin I, I think this is like a slightly a different experience from Finita. When Finita wants to provide choices um, of activities to your students, what happened with my student is they got confused when they're given choices because they always want to know like, okay, what is the answer? Do you want answer A or do you want answer B? Instead of like, okay, you can do A or you can do B. I mean, I don't care as long as you're thinking about it and following the process. So I think as a teacher, we also have to consider um, giving our students more tools to think rather than just complete the task. I mean, because we're not, because we're not producing factory workers, <laughs> we're producing people. So we need to uh, focus more on some of the things that make them a complete human, I should say. Um, something like social skills, something like soft skills. And I think I'm going to discuss about that on the 5th of June. So this is, consider this as a promotion to my own session. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Teaser, teaser. Sorry, guys. <laughs> teaser. So uh, th this is something like that. I, th I, think, I think as... Um, as a culture, we sometimes needs to adjust our culture a little bit. Thank you, Pa. Thank you. Uh, good. Ah, okay. Bro Daniel, please. Oh, ya. Yeah. Uh, menambahkan uh, informasi dari Mbak uh, Neni ya. Yeah. Memang guru yang masih uh, berfokus pada learning goals belum ke motivation. So, saya ingin berbagi sedikit tentang satu artikel yang sudah saya 
uh, jadikan rujukan lumayan lama. Jadi semenjak saya dulu aktif di lembaga bahasa, uh, I often use this model, uh, attention, relevance, confidence, and satisfaction. So ini hampir sama dengan PPP sebetulnya ya, presentation, practice, production, tapi lebih detail. Uh, Bapak Ibu bisa uh, meng- uh, mendownload uh, paper ini, artikel ini, ya. Intinya bahwa di setiap pembelajaran kita harus uh, connecting. Ini topiknya mau bicara apa sih? Lalu uh, relevansinya untuk uh, kehidupan anak-anak itu apa? Konteksnya itu seperti apa? Nah, dengan begitu maka mereka akan termotivasi. Jadi uh, di sini uh, headernya adalah motivation. So Uh, brainstorming ada di bagian attention uh, gather sini. Jadi silakan dieksplor sendiri ya. Thank you. Okay. So, thank you, Kakak Daniel. Okay. So, uh, I've got uh, another interesting questions. Similar almost similar to the one from Ibu uh, Suwarni. That is about students engagements in our teaching and learning process. during this remote teaching. Oke lah, Pak Jati uh, tadi bilang karena online kita nggak bisa kontrol uh, biarkan pergi gitu ya. atau <laughs> atau bagaimana gitu kan. Kalau di kelas sih kalau ada orang yang ngobrol kita bisa samperin gitu kan. Nah, sekarang kalau ada uh, orang uh, siswa uh, apa namanya join gini kan uh, kemudian kameranya nggak dihidupin itu ternyata dia mandi atau dia kemana gitu kan uh, so sometimes we do have students like that i do have pak jateng so uh, can somebody please uh, give me a tip uh, to get close engagement so i want to hear from ibu ina singkat ya ibu ina kita yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. thank you thank you terima kasih banyak uh, jadi Pada prinsipnya sebelum kita mengajar, kita sudah membuat kontrak dulu dengan mahasiswa kita. Ada kontrak, kontrak. jadi kontrak ini ada role-nya, ada role-nya, ada rutinitas yang akan kita lakukan. Kemudian yang kedua, kita juga menganalisa kebutuhannya. Jadi kita tanya dulu mahasiswa kita, nih analisisnya, mereka mau belajar apa di fakultas kita ini. Apa sih yang mereka senangi, materi-materi apa yang mereka senangi. Sehingga kita bisa mendesain, merekonstruksi ulang RPS kita ya, rencana pembelajaran semester kalau kita di universitas. Jadi jangan mau kita yang kita bawa ke mahasiswa kita. Jadi kita harus tahu target learner kita itu siapa. Jadi siapa mereka, levelnya gimana. Jadi menggunakan model ABCD-nya, hampir related tadi sama Daniel yang bagaimana desainnya, model desainnya. Jadi kalau menggunakan Azure, Da, kita bisa menganalisa siapa sih student yang kita uh, akan ajar, bagaimana mereka uh, attention-nya, bagaimana behavior-nya, bagaimana condition-nya, dan bagaimana degree-nya. Jadi kita bisa formulate dia, mendesainnya dalam uh, sebuah pembelajaran. Jadi instruksionalnya bisa kita dapat. Sama dengan uh, kemarin materinya Mbak Vinita, saya senangnya di situ karena dia bisa me- me- mengajarkan kita, memberikan informasi kepada kita te- te- tentang penggunaan instruksional design-nya by using ganye, ganye, nine event interaction. Saya rasa di situ, jadi kalau mengukur karakter mahasiswa sebenarnya bisa kita lihat di sini. Secara online pun sebenarnya kita harus mendidik mahasiswa kita untuk berkarakter. Jadi di teorinya okay. model, sedikit dulu sedikit. Di teorinya yeah. di teori di teori cybergogi ini kan ada yang dinilai adalah uh, sosial faktornya. Jadi sosial faktornya ini kalau ayah anda mau mengatakan ada yang mandi ada yang ini kalau di sosial faktornya itu harus memang menghadirkan real real personnya seperti hari ini kita kelihatan seperti ini. Inilah real person yang kita tuntut. Jadi berkarakter tetap Uh, ada di pembelajaran online terasa itu. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Uh, I think uh, I can listen. We can listen to Lutfi. Probably has some ideas to share about engagement between students and teachers. Lutfi, please. Oke, okay, thank you, Pak Agus. Uh, mungkin saya hanya sekedar memberikan dikit saja tentang bagaimana cara untuk mengajak siswa lebih ingat dalam pembelajaran online. Salah satu yang bisa kita lakukan adalah berikan mereka roles, berikan mereka peran. Jadi, libatkan mereka dalam aktivitas. Kalau kita menggunakan Zoom, katakan, lalu kita hanya memberikan uh, lecturing saja, otomatis mereka akan meninggalkan kita. 
ya tapi berbeda ketika kita memberikan sebuah aktivitas di mana mereka diikut sertakan dalam kegiatan tersebut berikan mereka tanggung jawab berikan mereka role di situ mereka akan uh, lebih termotivasi untuk menyelesaikan uh, apa yang sudah kita berikan kepada mereka dan mereka akan lebih bertanggung jawab mungkin seperti itu Pak Agus singkat saja. Alright, thank you, uh, Celia. Uh, maybe simple tips for asynchronous learning. Uh, this is what I always do with my students. Uh, there is a term called e-moderation. Jadi Bapak Ibu ketika misalnya asynchronous learning bisa menjadi perannya sebagai moderator di uh, sesi diskusi itu. Jadi you do not need to reply, to reply every single post created by your students. The goal is just to encourage the students uh, to express their ideas. You just need to monitor regularly and be ready to facilitate the discussion if the students go off the topic, uh, if they express opinions without justification or simply lack of critical thinking. For example, uh, you may ask, uh, this is a good observation. Can you give us some example to support your view? And then uh, you make an interesting point here. Can you think of uh, any ways this opinion can be challenged or pertanyaan-pertanyaan uh, seperti itu. Jadi uh, ketika misalnya asinkronus itu atau misalnya sinkronus, student harus tahu bahwa bapak ibu selalu ada di situ as a moderator, bukan yang oh this is uh, this is wrong, this is right, ya seperti itu. Mungkin itu bagus. Fantastic. Oke, okay. uh, mungkin uh, this is the very last questions. Uh, we are interested very much in using technology. Uh, probably Vinita has this experience. This is about, this issue is about uh, using technology with young learners, with children, but their parents do not allow them to get close, very closely uh, with their uh, mobile phones, for example. So, any uh, comment to this issue? We will invite Ibu Finita because she is uh, concerned very much in, in uh, young learners. Finita, please. Thank you, Pak Agus. Wow, it's a bit difficult. It's a very difficult question. The only thing that I can suggest is communicate with parents. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I cannot suggest any other things. Uh, it means that we need to build a good communication with parents, not only asking them to let the kids uh, use the gadget or technology, but we need to have a clear explanation on what the kids need to do and uh, the benefit or uh, the output that we are going to get out of using that gadget. If it cannot happen, then we cannot force parents to allow the kids to do that. Probably they have their own rules with uh, gadgets. So the only thing is communicate with parents and explain what we are going to do with those gadgets. Okay, all right. Uh, probably perlu testimony barangkali semacam itu atau enggak? <laughs> testimony apa? <laughs> testimony bahwa Teknologi atau gadget itu uh, apa namanya give benefits for children kita. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, perlu, by, perlu. by explaining explaining what we are going to do and the benefit that the kids and the family will get out of uh, the task that we provide. Uh, of course, as a teacher, we also need to consider the kind of task uh, assignment that we that we give to the kids. Um, not only tugas or uh, tasks, uh, things like that, but something fun, something that can be done together with parents. Okay. Give them or give them a choice. Either yeah. either you let either you let your kids to use uh, cell phones so that I can teach them, or you teach them. That's a good choice. <laughs> <laughs> or you teach them by yourself. So okay. Then you will get the permission. <laughs> then you will get the permission. See, it's blackmailing in an elegant way. <laughs> okay, good idea. All right. So, but Jati, we have five minutes exceeded from the time allotted to our session today, and then I it's don't nice want to. to what is it? Make uh, Nanny stay up late like this, and then probably Pak Jati, uh, the closing statement from you as the president of ITEL in this session, please. 
Okay, um, thank you Pak Agus. Uh, thank you very much everyone. Uh, terima kasih banyak teman-teman yang sudah stay up late, yang sudah ikutan dipombardir dengan pertanyaan yang unexpected, tidak bisa menyiapkan dan segala macam uh, merepotkan teman-teman. Thank you, thank you untuk participants. Tapi kini pesan participants yang daftar banyak nih yang datang separuh karena zoomnya harus upgrade. Tolong yang dengar suara saya. Teman-teman disuruh upgrade Zoom-nya. Kalau nggak upgrade, nggak akan bisa masuk. Yaitu terakhirnya tanggal 30 Mei. Jadi sekarang sudah 1 Juni, so you should have upgrade your Zoom so that you can hadir di acara ini. gitu Acara-acara yang depan akan cukup menarik. Silahkan, registernya sudah banyak, tapi saya khawatir seperti hari ini-hari ini banyak yang komplain. Tidak bisa masuk katanya kenapa. gitu Jadi tadi lihat-lihat ada... yang share dari Jakarta Pus, saya sudah pasang di Facebook. Closing statement, uh, we are very happy. Punya kesempatan, jadi COVID ini jangan dianggap sebagai apa uh, <tuh> belenggu, gitu, tapi malah justru COVID ini, uh, kan kita bebas nih COVID, boleh di rumah, boleh ngerjain apa saja, gitu kan. So it's the time for us to experiment. And thank you for joining us. Moga-moga bermanfaat. Semoga kalau ada kritik dan saran, we selalu selalu open. Bisa email saya, bisa email idle board yang lain. Kira-kira gitu Pak Agus, kalau saya closing statement-nya nanti nggak selesai-selesai dua minggu. <laughs> Lempar right. ke Pak Agus. Thank you. So, uh, teman-teman uh, yang mungkin belum update, uh, mungkin ya yang di sini pasti sudah update ya. Yang belum silakan uh, caranya kalau mungkin HP-nya tidak automatically di-update, setelah login diklik uh, apa namanya akun kita ke bawah itu ada menu check for update. Silakan dicek uh, siapa tahu memang masih perlu update aplikasi Zoom-nya. Baik, uh, terima kasih all the panelists, all the guest stars uh, for the inspiring sessions today. Hopefully this this is really inspiring. I got inspired too here. And then tomorrow we will have our sessions at what time tomorrow? 3.30. Yeah, Finn. Okay. All right. At jam 3.30 yang belum daftar silahkan daftar saya yakin yang di sini sudah pada daftar hopefully uh, kita bisa ketemu lagi besok sore uh, jaga kesehatan jaga keimanan jaga imunitas Seko, supaya kita kuat iman kuat imun dan kuat segalanya terima kasih saya Agus DP mohon maaf atas segala kekurangan kita ketemu besok sore Assalamualaikum Waalaikumsalam Kita langsung anu tuh nanti langsung meeting kita out dulu terus bikin akun baru untuk yeah. review ya. Yeah. Oke. Okay. Let's leave and uh, create account. Yeah. Maybe can you close this and then. Uh... Um. Okay. Let's see. Um. Leave now. I think you should end the meeting, Pak Jati. Oke. Okay. Uh, how about your recording? Oke. Okay. Uh. I got problem with my computer, so I only record half of the half of the meeting. But you recorded full, right? Um, not sure because it's a hang as well. Let's see. Oh really? Well, we have the. You can look from the FB. You can. Download. We have the FB video anyway. Yeah. All right okay. then. So let's leave and... the meeting, end the meeting, and say goodbye to everybody. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye bye.